Chapter 2 Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger, and abounding in a steadfast love, and relentless from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent, and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering? For the Lord, your God, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fest, call a solemn assembly. Gather people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even the infants, 
at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room, and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should he be said among the peoples, Where is their God? This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 51 Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord is a great God. O oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and making her stand before all the people, they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test Jesus so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Then once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, begin, beginning with the elders, and Jesus was left alone with the woman, standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go your way. And from now on, do not sin again. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Ash Wednesday is a day for and a reminder of our mortality. I am a person who values church tradition, but I must admit I have been wondering how can we make sense of Ash Wednesday this year with all the loss we have experienced. In Joel's prophetic writing that we have just heard, the plague of locusts has just happened with all its devastation, and Joel is calling on the people 
to come together. As he writes about the sound of alarm, the nearing day of the Lord, we're reminded then that the people had had enough. And I think many of us have had enough. And yet we know there is more to do before we can get further in the recovery from the pandemic. Joel's call is to gather for a solemn assembly, leaving our rooms so we can be together and weep in repentance. For the priests, the ministers of the Lord, to weep. I will tell you that I have wept several times in the last year over not being able to meet for worship, even as I helped to make decisions about not meeting for the safety of one another and the wider communities we serve. But let's not neglect the middle verses of that passage from Joel. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishment. Return. Return to God's love, mercy and grace. That reminder of God's love, mercy and grace is why we mark as Wednesday in the middle of a pandemic which has already reminded us again and again of our mortality and that of so many people across the world. One of our church bells is being tolled a hundred times every Sunday at noon until the end of Lent to mark that huge loss of life. And we should find other ways too to lament and mark what has happened, the people who have died and the loss of life in so many ways. Repentance and mortality, these are weighty topics which acknowledge the vulnerability of being human and an integral part of how we acknowledge this on Ash Wednesday is God's mercy, the forgiveness, the grace offered to us all and in which we belong. Our Gospel reading is one of those where people are trying to catch Jesus out. Moses said, what do you say about this woman caught in adultery? Jesus writes with his finger in the sand, an action so iconic that it's an idiom for us now, writing in the sand. And when they insist on an answer, Jesus says, let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. I think we can imagine the kind of emotions that might have been surging around as probably nothing happened initially. And then quietly, the elders started to move away. And one by one, everyone followed as they realized the point Jesus was making. And the way their testing had revealed something they and we probably aren't comfortable facing. Jesus doesn't condemn the woman caught in adultery. And he doesn't condemn the people either. Some of you may have seen the Channel 4 series, It's a Sin, which has been on recently. This powerful depiction shows the lives of several gay men in the 1980s, which were devastated as the AIDS crisis develops, with misinformation and shame and denial being served up in huge quantities. I know of many, many tears shed while watching this series over the loss of so much life, young, vibrant, loving, talented, friends and partners and colleagues and sons and siblings and uncles, and the contrasting ways the families and friends of those young men responded, some obviously and openly with love, and more commonly with a much more complex muddle of love and denial. The title being It's a Sin worried me to start with because it seems so outdated. The majority of people now recognise the value of gay people and same-sex relationships. Event events in this series unfold to reveal and emphasise the sinfulness of prejudice and denial and promulgating shame and their devastating consequences. Rather than being about others, the focus is on examining ourselves. In different circumstances, I think Jesus is making a similar point in our Gospel reading about the sinfulness in which we share and the way he doesn't condemn us but releases us to go on our way and sin no more. 
The prophet Joel says, Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Return. Return to God's love, mercy and grace. Like everything else, our practices on Ash Wednesday are different this year. Our communion is a spiritual one, and our ashes are sprinkled by a priest or imposed on ourselves. The words we usually use as ashes are imposed are some of the most direct liturgical phrases that we utter in the whole year. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin, and be faithful to Christ. In our Gospel reading, Christ writes in the sand, dust, rather than condemning or judging or pointing out who is to blame for what. The reference to dust also reminds us of the words said at funeral services, as earthly remains are committed to the ground, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And yet, we can only name those words because of the words which follow, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies, that they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. The prophet Joel says, Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Return. Return to God's love, mercy and grace. Today we make our spiritual communion, receiving Christ's love, participating together, maybe receiving sprinkled ashes as we begin this holy season of Lent, knowing that God calls us to reconciliation in love and knowing that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. God the Son, have, have mercy upon us. us. God the Holy Spirit, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, and from all evil intent, Good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws, Good Lord, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil, Good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of death and at the day of judgment, Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood and obedience, by your baptism, fasting and temptation, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver, deliver us. us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power and by your preaching of the kingdom, good, good Lord, Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, good, good Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us. us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, good, good Lord, Lord deliver, deliver us. us. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance, and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives accordingly according to your holy word. Holy, holy God, God Holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour. In, in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, 
we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another in whatever way we are able, a sign of peace.
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you do it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, and still we come in the world. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, in remembrance of the precious death and passion, the mighty resurrection and glorious ascension of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, we offer you through him this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Grant that by his merits and death, and through faith in his blood, we and all your church may receive forgiveness of our sins and all other benefits of his power. Although we are unworthy, through our manifold sins, to offer you any sacrifice, yet we pray that you will accept this, our duty and service that we have. Do not weigh our merits, but pardon our offenses, and fill us all who share in this holy communion with your grace and heavenly blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty God, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith with thanksgiving. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercy. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, the gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his blood, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him. And he is us.
Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us, both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly love. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive these his inestimable gifts and also daily endeavour to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bids me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, though just about, with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. Now to be thine, yea, thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am of that free love, the breath lacks depth and height to prove. If for a season 